Hello, I discovered that you are having issues with jump examination when it comes to comprehension passage. So in this video, I am going to explain to you how you can easily answer um, comprehension passage of English in jump examination. So are you ready? Let's go. All right, you are welcome back, guys. My name is Ayone Samson Oluwato Biloba, and I am a student of AKT State University. I am currently in my second year. So today, like I said, I am going to walk you through how you can easily answer comprehension passage uh, without having much problems about it. This video is divided into two parts. All right, the first part, which I will call the hey part, I will tell you walkable ways you can go about with comprehension passage, and in the second part. I am going to give examples of the kind of questions that can be set. So I really want you to watch that because it's possible it comes out from your examination. Now, the first thing I would love to say is that you should read the passage carefully. All right, thorough, thoroughly read through the passage to understand the main idea, the key details and the overall context. All right, now you don't just rush into answering a comprehension passage. All right, you know, an excerpt is written or an example is given. You don't just assume that okay, this is what the passage is saying. Now, the the the, the major issue that people always have with this examination is because they don't uh, they, they just assume the position of the writer. I mean, the person that said the question without actually knowing the context, what the writer is actually trying to point out, what the writer is actually trying to derive or gain from asking you that kind of question. So I will not want you to make that kind of error. All right. So pay attention to the structure, tone, and language used in the passage. It is very, very important. You know, uh, on, on tone. I'm like I said, this video is divided divided into two parts. So in the second part, I'm going to give you examples. All right. And we are going to answer questions all together. All right. So don't worry about all these things. But just let me give you preambles so that you understand and remember them easily. Also, number two that you must always keep in your mind is to identify the question types. All right. For example, determine whether the question is asking what the main idea or specific details, uh, inferences, vocabulary, or the author's purpose and perspective. All right. Now, in, in most cases, we make mistakes because we don't try to understand the perspective of the author. Hope you know that in a comprehension passage, if the author or the writer says this is the fact, you as a student, whether you believe it or not, you have no uh, right to argue just choose what the writer is expecting from you now i saw a jump past question uh where uh, the man was uh, forgotten uh how the question was structured but it was talking about history being the thing the, the the most important thing to study while meanwhile we have law we have medicine we have other you know um great uh, uh courses like that and this man said it is history now this is not something that you have to argue with you just have to choose what the writer expects do you understand don't worry we are going to get under those kind of questions soon all right also make sure you, that you adjust your approach based on the question type like i said all right and so number three make sure you locate relevant information in the passage scan the passage to find the se section or details that are relevant to answering the questions all right and also identify keywords or phrases in the question that can help you locate the corresponding information in the passage when we get to the aspect where we begin to give examples you discover that there are some questions that we always find words like maybe likely most assuredly doubtedly and words like that all right so don't worry we are going to do some questions together and you will understand what i'm saying better make sure that you formulate a concise and accurate answer you see, something you are going to gain from this challenge that you are not going to gain from anywhere is that you must work with your mind and you must be able to eliminate. You see, as students, you must be able to eliminate. Now, by the time we get to the examples, you see what I mean by you trying to eliminate, you definitely know that this cannot be the answer. This cannot be the right answer. So you must know actually how to eliminate wrong answers. All right. So avoid relevant details or information that is not directly related to the question. All right, you know, when you are reading a comprehension passage, you will see a lot of details. You must recognize the main idea or the subject idea or the, the topic sentence. All right, don't worry, I'm still going to explain all of these things that I'm talking about. In view of jump complex questions when it comes to comprehension passage, I have decided to bring to your notice some keys that you can easily use or some steps you can take in order to answer these questions and yet you still get it rightly. All right, so the number one is the subject matter or thesis 
statement. All right. Now, you need to identify the subject matter and the thesis statement of that passage. The subject matter is the topic or what the whole passage is all about. All right. That is what subject matter means. And now the thesis statement is how it is being passed, how that subject matter is being passed out to you, the kind of sentences and words used, how it is being passed out to you. Do you understand? So please take note of that thesis statement and subject matter. Number two, topic sentence. The topic sentence is the main idea of each passage. All right, that is the main idea. For example, if you read a passage and then you cannot hold something that, okay, this is what the author is saying, then you must have been wrong. There must be something that the uh, uh, author is trying to say. All right, you must be able to hold on to something. That is the topic uh, sentence. All right, and also the structure. Like I said earlier on, please pay attention to the structure. It is very, very important and pertinent. Now, it's important to consider all the parts that make up the passage as a way of having a clearer picture of what uh, it is all about. For example, uh, if a passage has uh, a title, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, these parts make up uh, the structure of the passage. All right. So, uh, and please, this is one thing I want to say also. Make sure you understand the examiner. Make sure you understand the examiner. Now, in comprehension passage, there are some things we call um, indirect factual statement indirect factual statements and sometimes we call them verbal irony now what is verbal irony or indirect factual statement let me give an example on this before or, or first rather now if your mother send you to the market all right and then she said buy potatoes buy yam all right buy pepper and when you are coming back home make sure they collect it from your hand now is the mother actually saying that after using her own money to purchase all of these things, the potatoes, the pears, after I'm buying all of these things, does she really mean that you should make sure robbers or any other person collected those things that you have buy from your hand? No. That is what we mean by indirect factual statement or a verbal irony. All right. So it simply means that the expression is not coming directly to you as it is being used in day-to-day -day language. Let me give you some questions. Listen to this question. Question one, which of the following is an example of an indirect factual statement? Hey, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. B, it's raining outside. C, the book is on the table. D, the movie was very good. What do you think would be the correct answer? I am waiting for you. Alright, are you sure? Are you sure? Alright. D is actually the correct answer. The movie was very good. Now, this is not making any specification. This is only telling you about the journey that, oh, this movie is good. You were not told the kind of movie it is. You are not told what uh, we have to do about the movie or the kind of movie that you are watching. We don't only know that the movie is very good. Now let's consider other, uh, uh, other options. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now it told us it is 25 degrees Celsius. So there's no doubt for me to think that it is 50 degrees Celsius. No, the writer has already come out plain that this is what, uh, this is the degree of the Celsius. All right. Now it's raining outside. It is the fact. It is the fact. If it is raining outside, like I said, if you go outside, you see it's raining also. So it is not indirect. All right. Now, see, the book is on the table. It is not indirect. If you go to the table, you will find the book. Do you understand? Yes. Now, don't worry. I'm still try I will still teach you elimination method. Now, let us um, uh, go to another question on that, on indirect. Which of the following statements is not an indirect factual statement please note anytime you are trying to answer any question in jam be quest be, be careful of not accept and all those words like that please be so so much careful about it now the question is which of the following statements is not an indirect factual statement hey the capital of france is paris b i think the weather is quite pleasant today c the theme played exceptionally well in the game D, the book is located on the top shelf. Now, what do you think is the correct answer? Like I said, note that not. Which of the following statements is not an 
indirect factual statement. So if you understand what I've been saying, you will know that D is the correct one. The book is located on top of the shelf or on the top shelf. That is to say, even if you go there, it is, it is direct. Do you understand? It is direct statement. If you go there, you will find the book. All right. I hope you will get what I'm trying to say. You know, the statement the book is located on the top shelf is a direct factual statement as it provides a clear objective description of the book's location. It does not express any uh, subjective opinion or evaluation. All right. Now, question three. I want you to drop the answer of this on the in the comment section. What is the primary purpose of using indirect factual statements in communication? A. To convey precise unambiguously information to express personal opinions or beliefs to provide a more subjective or, eval or evaluative perspective and D to make suggestions or recommendations I want you to drop the answer down this video and I'm going to tell you the correct answer all right now we also have direct factual statement direct factual statement the first one we did is indirect factual statement and I said it can also be considered as verbal irony we have irony in literature now this is direct factual statement now direct factual statement is when you declare something and that is what it is and I've been giving you an example before but now for me to test your knowledge I also want you to drop the answer for this on in the comment section and I am going to reply to you which of the following is an example of a direct factual statement hey it might rain later today B. The book is on the table. C. I think the movie was good. D. She, she could be at the library. What do you think is the correct answer? If you get this right, you are doing well. Remember, we did just like wet and opposite on indirect. So I wanted to provide the answer to that. Now, let us take another one. And, uh, question two on direct. Which of the following statements is not a direct factual statement? Now, the capital of Nigeria is Abuja. B. The sun rises in the east. C. I believe the weather will be sunny tomorrow. D. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. What do you think is the correct answer? Remember the question is, which of the following statements is not a direct factual statement? I think I should explain this. Now, option C, it says, I believe the weather will be sunny tomorrow. Let's start from option A. The capital of Abuja is, uh, I mean, the capital of Nigeria is Abuja. That's the fact, right? But you are looking for a statement that is not direct. Now, B, the sun rises in the east. It is the fact. We know it's proven scientifically. Now, option D, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm talking about something the other time that you must be able to eliminate. Now, what I've basically done is to eliminate with my mind. I know that this cannot be the answer. This has to be the answer. So that is what I use in choosing the right answer, actually. Do you understand? Anytime you read any question, definitely two of the options must be totally wrong. It must be totally wrong. And then when you have two options uh, uh, left, you now begin to evaluate and think, okay, which of these two is actually the correct one? Then as much as you can remove two of the options that they are not totally correct, you are very very close to answering the questions rightly all right now from this we believe uh, i believe the weather will be sunny tomorrow remember believe anywhere you use the word believe it is subject to doubt i know is different from i believe anything you believe is subject to doubt and we use the word believe in most cases on abstract things things that we cannot yet see or touch please get that and always remember that what is the primary purpose of using direct factual statements in communication i will not give you the option for this i want you to provide the answer in the comment section again what is the primary purpose of using direct factual statement in communication if you can provide this answer then i will be sure that you actually understand what i am teaching you and number three we have implied statement on implied statement, you need to understand that the fact is not expressly stated in the passage. The fact is not what expressly stated. You need a logical conclusion to actually get the correct answer. But clue must have been provided for you in the question to arrive at a logical conclusion. Let us take for example, in the statement, 
she didn't come to the party because she was sick the implied meaning is that now this question has not told us something specifically the in the statement it simply says she didn't come to the party because she was sick right now the implied meaning is that what hey she was not interested in attending the party b she was unable to attend the party due to illness c she had a prior commitment that prevented her from attending d she was not invited to the party now on this channel we are illuminated minds you must be able to use your mind to think now if you look at this question first thing i will advise you to do is to eliminate some things that you know it can never be the answer now check option d she was not invited to the party that is totally wrong c she had a prior commitment that prevented her from attending it is wrong now let us check option a and option b those are the two that we can still say okay somehow they are uh, they they can still be looked into now let us look into option a she was not interested in attending the party that is a lie that is a lie now option b she was unable to attend the party due to illness now go back to the question she didn't come to the party because she was sick illness is a sickness do you get what you are talking about now she was sick she couldn't attend the meeting or she couldn't come because of illness do you get what implied statement means now it is not stated expressly like that do you get now let me leave you with a question and i want you to drop the answer in the comment section which of the following statement is an implied statement hey the weather is cold today b i am feeling unwell c the exam was challenging and d i need to buy some groceries i need your answer on that and i will be expecting i'm waiting for who will get that correctly all right now number four statement of possibility and in this you will see words like maybe doubtedly probably most likely and etc all right now let's take some example on this question one on statement of possibility which of the following statement expresses a possibility the weather is sunny today b i will go to the park tomorrow c it may rain later d i have finished my homework now remember what i said in questions like this we always have words like like doubtedly like probably like most likely and like maybe now let's eliminate again the weather is sunny today that is the fact it is declarative sentence option b i will go to the park tomorrow it is a declarative sentence you are sure c it may rain later now look at that word may i said maybe probably doubtedly most likely and etc like that now it may rain today you don't need to disturb yourself just know that is the answer now d i have finished my homework all of those things are facts all right it may rain later is the correct expression or the correct answer do you get what i'm trying to say now let's take another one okay let's take another question which of the following statement does not express a possibility i told you earlier be careful of the words like not except most especially all of these but one all those things be careful now the question is which of the following statements does not express a possibility hey she might be late for the meeting might note that b the team could win the championship could a verb note that i definitely have to go to the store i definitely what are other words for definitely most assuredly surely option d it's possible that the fight that the flight rather it's possible that the flight will be delayed now the question is which of the following statements does not express a possibility 
option a b and d it expresses a possibility all right now option c i definitely i surely have to go to the store please do you understand how to answer comprehension passage in jump examination i said know what the writer is trying to get from you know the mind of the writer or the examiner and then you will get it correctly and then i told you you must be able to eliminate your problems or your fears will reduce when, once you can take out two wrong options and then it remains two all you need to do is just to 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 read the question better understand the question and then you get the answers correctly there is a high tendency that if you can take out two wrong answers you'll be able to get the correct answer do you get it so i want you to watch other uh, videos on this youtube channel where i talk about how you can score high in jump uh jump examination uh format i've made a lot of videos on this youtube channel that is really going to help you in your examinations even if you are in second uh, i mean uh, in tertiary education that is probably polytechnic university or college of education this youtube channel is really going to help you out so i want you to do me a favor i want you to like this video comment and i'll be expecting your answers and i want you to subscribe to this youtube channel bye and god bless you